thymus is another primary lymphoid organ and it's a flat and bilobed organ present in the chest cavity suppose at this position there is heart and exactly from the back side of the heart aorta here aorta will originate and will go from the back side of the heart in the downward direction so where the aorta is going to take the turn at this position there is thymus the thymus a part of the thymus is in contact with the aorta so this is the aorta then thymus is here the t cell progenitor which is generated by bone marrow will travel through blood and reach up to the thymus and actually further the uh, uh, maturation of the t cell progenitor to recognize what is self and non self will take place in the thymus now immature t lymphocytes are also called thymocytes but when they are matured they will either get converted into cytotoxic t lymphocytes that is tc or helper t lymphocytes that is th now the thymus is actually a bilobed organ so two lobes are there but in one lobe there are many compartments and these compartments are because of such extensions called trabeculae and this is one trabeculae this is another and such if this is the complete thymus then say there are so many compartments are there which are made by trabeculae in thymus we have mainly two region one is the cortex and second is the medulla now this on every important part of or organ of our body there is a layer of fat and we call that as capsule in case of thymus so actually cortex starts from this area this outer portion is called cortex and you can see it is densely populated and inside area is medulla but the medulla is sparsely populated it's not very dense and but amongst cortex this region which is present just below capsule is called subcapsular cortex so this is the subcapsular cortex after that starts the actual cortex in which there are cortical thymic epithelial cells present so cortical thymic epithelial cells are present in the cortex region and if we we'll look below it there is medulla and there are medullary thymic epithelial cells are present while the junction of cortex and medulla is called cortico medullary junction that is cmg that is cortico medullary junction and now in the cortico medullary junction you can see in this area we have blood vessels blood vessels are not only present in the trabeculae but they are present inside the thymus also but here blood supply is more and actually through this blood supply is going to come out the t cell progenitor through this blood vessels and this is the ts you can see this is the blood vessel and from that the uh, t cell progenitor will come out initially it is immature this immature t cell progenitor is called double negative why double negative because we are well familiar there are two types of t lymphocytes one th which will have suppose this is a th lymphocyte it will have tcr no doubt but other than tcr it will also have cd4 receptor if it's a tc that is cytotoxic t lymphocyte it will also have a tcr and other than tcr it will have cd8 receptor but initially neither cd4 nor cd8 is present on it and that's why it is called double negative means both are not present so this immature t lymphocyte will simply look like this and that is what is called double negative but it will travel from this area that is cortico medullary junction to the exact para the subcapsular cortex this is the subcapsular cortex region and here as it is exposed to this uh, cortical uh, thymic epithelial cells that is c tech cells these cells will interact with it give proper education to it and because of that because of the maturation it will become double positive means now this double negative cell will become double positive means now it will develop both cd4 as well as cd8 that's why it is called double positive but as it will travel from cortex towards medullary region 
which time it will either remain CD4 positive that is it will develop into TH lymphocyte or CD8 positive that is it will develop into TC lymphocytes and now this is called single positive and this single positive will further interact with the cortical as well as medullary epithelial cells and then only this mature fully uh, uh, mature uh, this single uh, singly positive cell will through blood vessel will again go into the blood circulation during this complete process most of the T lymphocytes are going to die why because their primary education do not take place properly what is going to happen that these epithelial cells will interact with the immature T lymphocytes. So, if I will draw an epithelial cell here and these are the uh, T lymphocytes, then through signaling, through certain cytokines, they will start developing TCR. And of course, the, uh, during formation of TCR also, various gene rearrangement takes place. That's why various types of T lymphocytes with various types of TCR will develop. So, what is formed is a TCR. But these epithelial cells will show them either MHC class 1 or class 2. In the group of MHC class 1 or class 2, they will show them the self antigen. So, this is self MHC. But in the group of self MHC, they will show them what? Self antigen. And when self antigen is shown to this T lymphocyte, it should either no doubt through TCR it will interact with it but during that either CD4 or CD8 will also develop if it is CD8 definitely it will recognize it in the group of MHC class 1 but if it is CD4 it will recognize only in the group of MHC class 2 by the way both in the group of MHC class 1 as well as class 2 it is shown self antigen is shown to the T lymphocytes now it should not show any activation against this self anti self means a body's part and that's why it's against any self antigen it should not show any activation it should show tolerance it should tolerate it it should not show any activation but there are some uh, uh, T lymphocytes which will develop such a TCR which will show high affinity for the self-antigen and if they will show high affinity for self-antigen instead of showing tolerance to the self-antigen if they will show high affinity they can create problem in the body and they can if such T lymphocytes will survive they will go in the body and they will generate the problem of autoimmunity just to stop this such T lymphocytes are a immediately a signal of apoptosis induced in them and through that such T lymphocytes are immediately killed. So, those which are killed, this type of selection is called negative selection. Why? If they are allowed to survive, when they will be allowed to survive? When they will show less affinity for self antigen. So, if they are allowed to survive, that is called positive selection. And if they are immediately induced to die through apoptosis, we call this as negative selection. So, you can see either there is a positive selection, TCR is formed by gene rearrangement and such T lymphocytes are allowed to survive. Negative, of course, which will show high affinity for self antigen and they can pose the problem of autoimmunity in the body and that's why they are immediately killed and as they are killed this type of selection is called negative but there are many such T lymphocytes are also there which don't recognize any self antigen in the group of MHC so there is not at all recognition so they are completely neglecting self antigen they can also create problem and that's why they are also killed and this is called death by neglect you should not neglect the self antigen completely that we don't know who is this if this is so die 
and that's why it is also killed and it is seen 95 to 97% of the T lymphocytes in thymus which will go in thymus from the bone marrow they will through blood they will go to the thymus for this education 95 to 97% are going to die they will be killed and only 3 to 5% will come out they will again re-enter the blood circulation so during this many of them are dying but some of them 3 to 5 percent will uh, pass the primary education successfully and they will come in the blood circulation so now in our blood what do we have we have such T lymphocytes which can only recognize non-cell and they can show activation against non-cell they will show strong affinity for the non-cell they will kill non-cell but they won't show any affinity for the cell and that's why such T lymphocytes are there in our body at present but there is a syndrome called Dijord syndrome in which body don't develop thymus. If the body won't develop thymus, definitely the immunity is very weak. Also, with age, the uh, ability of thymus will keep, uh, go on decreasing. At puberty, thymus shows its maximum activity. But at the age of 35, thymus is only 20% active. And at the age of 65, it is only 2% active. So with age, the potential of thymus will keep on decreasing. This is all about the primary lymphoid organ that is thymus. Thank you.